I will wage fierce war against the incarnate word, for although he is God, he is also man, and therefore of a lower nature than mine. I will exalt my throne and my dignity above his. I will conquer him and will humble him by my power and astuteness. The woman who is to be his mother shall perish at my hands. What is one woman against my power and greatness? And you, ye demons, who were injured together with me, follow me and obey me in the pursuit of this vengeance, as you have followed me in disobedience. Pretend to love men in order to destroy them. Serve them in order to ruin them and deceive them. Help them in order to pervert them and draw them into these my hellish regions. No human tongue can explain the malice and fury of this first council of Lucifer and his hosts against the human race, which although not yet in existence, was to be created. In it were concocted all the vices and sins of the world, thence preceded lies, sex, and errors. All iniquity had its origin in that chaos and in that abominable gathering, and all those that do evil are in the service of the prince of this assembly. Having closed this meeting, Lucifer sought permission to speak with God, and his majesty, for his own exalted ends, gave him permission. This was allowed in the same manner in which Satan spoke to God when he asked permission to persecute Job, and it happened on the day which corresponds to our Thursday. He addressed the Most High in the following words, Lord, since thou hast laid thy hand so heavily upon me in chastising me with so great cruelty, and since thou hast predetermined all that thou desirest to do for the men whom thou art to create, and since thou wishest to exalt and elevate so high the incarnate word and enrich the woman who is to be his mother with all thy predestined gifts, be now equitable and just. As thou hast given me permission to persecute the rest of men, give me also permission to tempt and make war against Christ, the man God, and the woman who is to be his mother. Give me freedom to exert all my powers against them. Other things Lucifer said on that occasion, and in spite of the great violence occasioned to his pride by the humiliation, he humbled himself nevertheless in order to ask for this permission. His wrathful anxiety to obtain what he desired was so great that he was willing to subdue even his arrogance, thus forcing one iniquity to yield to another. He knew too well that without the permission of the omnipotent Lord, he could attempt nothing. In order to be able to tempt Christ our Lord and his most holy mother in particular, he was willing to humiliate himself a thousand times, for he feared the threat which had been made that she should crush his head. The Lord answered, Thou must not, Satan, ask such a permission as due to thee in justice, for the incarnate word is God and Lord most high and omnipotent, though he is at the same time true man and thou art his creature. Even if the other men sin and subject themselves to thy will, this will not be possible in my only begotten made man. Though thou mayest succeed in making men slaves of sin, Christ will be holy and just segregated from sinners. He will redeem them if they fall. And this woman, against whom thou hast such wrath, although she is to be a mere creature and a true daughter of man, is to be preserved by my decree from sin. She is to be altogether mine forever, and on no account or title shall anyone else be allowed to have part in her. To this Satan replied, but what wonder that this woman should be holy, since no one on this earth will be allowed to draw her to the contrary or persecute her and incite her to sin. This cannot be equity nor just judgment, nor can this be proper and praiseworthy. Lucifer added yet other blasphemies in his arrogance, but the Most High, who disposes all things with wisdom, answered him. I will give thee permission to tempt Christ, 
so that he will be an example and a teacher in this to all the rest of men. I also give thee permission to persecute the woman, but thou must not touch her in regard to the life of her body. It is my will that Christ and his mother be not exempt from temptation, and that they be tempted by thee like the rest of men. This permission was more pleasing to the dragon than that of being free to persecute all the rest of the human race. In this he resolved to use more care than in the pursuit of any other project, as afterwards really happened. To no one else than himself was he resolved to confide its execution. Therefore the evangelist proceeds to say, <laughs> 